Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for attending our session. It's wonderful to see you. This panel, Community Driven AI Solutions. How youth build AI communities, technology for health, and human capability. So what does it all mean? Well, I've got an incredible panel. Let me introduce you to them. We'll start off with Dr. Hatim Abdul Hussain, practicing primary care physician in Northwest London and healthcare leader, policymaker, and academic. He's supporting the NHS AI strategy. So welcome, Hatim. Next up, Shweta Hushu, engineering manager of the computer vision team at Sky Specs, with a master's degree in ECE from the University of Michigan. She specializes in machine learning and is passionate about solving real world problems challenging humankind using AI. She also volunteers her time to nonprofits supporting this cause. Following her is the lovely Claire. Claire Matuka is a statistician, data scientist, and AI enthusiast. Based in Nairobi, Kenya. Shout out to the Africans in the room. <laughs> Claire serves as Swiss Cognitive Global AI Ambassador and is a Kenya representative at the Pan African Tech Foundation, where she regularly conducts training on artificial intelligence. And finally, our dear friend of the corner, Tofa White. Tofa is a conservation technologist and founder of EnviroTech startup Rainforest Connection and Squibbon. His roles as inventor, social entrepreneur, and field engineer have earned him accolades from the World Economic Forum, Rolex, and National Geographic, amongst others. So we can't say we don't have some of the best in the room to talk about community-driven AI solutions. On that note, let's kick off. We've got about 28 minutes, so we're going to have a robust discussion. And let's lead off with some thoughts. So there's a lot of young people in the room, a lot of new graduates in the space of AI, whether they're data engineers, data scientists. What does the next generation of AI leaders in the health, environment, energy, human capability spaces, really the spaces you're working in, look like? What do they look like? And Shweta, I'll start with you. Oh, um, well, uh, thank you, Nazreen, and very good morning to everyone. So I work at a startup that is uh, trying to optimize the wind operation and maintenance industry by leveraging artificial intelligence and robotics techniques. So I'm going to answer this question from the perspective of an AI practitioner working on real world industry data. And I think the most important thing for us is to uh, basically solve these focused problems uh, challenging the particular industry and actually take these solutions from the research stage and try and productionalize them. And there, I want to uh, highlight some couple of key points while you're doing that. For the, f the first thing for me, the first key point is that you should try and approach these uh, problems not with the mindset of applying the state-of-the-art, really cool uh, AI techniques, but with the mindset of solving them and then letting it, the artificial intelligence techniques gradually and organically fall into the solution that it best, best fits in. And I say this from experience that a lot of times heuristics and traditional approaches are actually better solutions for some of these problems. And which is why at, work, at my workplace, I kind of wrote these guidelines of when you're taking a machine learning project from conception to production. Mm. Uh, it's one of the earliest key questions you want to ask is, what have we tried so far? What heuristics have we tried so far? And why do you think AI is an important solution, uh, for, uh, important aspect for the solution? The second key point I want to highlight is you really have to work closely with domain experts. And uh, if you're in industries like, like energy or healthcare or environment, a lot of time the, the developers and the practitioners are not the knowledge keepers of the domain. And so you want to work closely with the domain experts right from the conception of the project to help uh, formalize the, what is the success criteria for your project. So Shweta, you're saying thinking, having the right thinking in place, and then working with industry experts. Exactly. Which, is, which comes, brings me to Hatim. Hatim, you spoke to us about the work with youth uh, developing the NHS, NHS uh, AI strategy. Tell us a little bit about that before I move on to Claire and Tofa. Thank you, Nazarene, and assalamu alaikum. The first thing to say is the way you build the youth is to create opportunities and create the role models. Now, the problem is that if we don't see leaders in, in healthcare that are working with data, that are working with AI, then people will not know that healthcare is the place to go to develop these solutions. So that really needs to come from the top. So you need to build your leadership and you need to build your role models. Mm -hmm. And that needs to be cross-professionalization. It needs to be doctors, it needs to be nurses, it needs to be physiotherapists, but it needs to be some of our new emerging professionals, our data engineers, our data scientists like Claire. 
Um, it needs to be some of our creators of, of technologies like Shweta and like Tofa. And if you bring these people together and you, and you showcase the work that they're doing, and then take this back to the community, my role as a practitioner, inshallah, tomorrow I'll be back in my clinic, I'll be seeing 30 people with multiple health issues, all sorts of problems from obesity due to the fact that they can't afford to go to the gym, asthma because they have problems in their home with mold, all of these other issues that have societal, wider issues that are causing their health issues. And then let's look at them and let's think about how we can support them by delivering solutions that matter to those individuals. So let's build from the grassroots with the right leadership and then your youth will follow because they will see that leadership, they will see the use cases, they will see the benefit that it gives your society and they'll be inspired. Isn't that so important? Leadership is always a topic that's uh, investigated, interrogated, what is leadership? But leadership is actually the thinking that's rooted in the young mindset of what it means to build a solution, and Claire is evidence of that as a young leader in Kenya. Claire, what would what, what the future AI leader look like? Um, thank you so much, Nazarene. Um, I would just like to say that the future AI leader, number one, needs to be very adaptable. Um, in terms of AI, AI is changing on a day-to-day -day basis. We have new things coming up constantly. Currently, we have the wave of transformers that's in NLP. We have something called neural networks compression. These things are still coming up on a day-to-day. -day. So for a young youth AI leader, you need to be able to adapt. You need to be able to realize, okay, my solution needs um, this kind of um, algorithm needs this kind of um, skill set, needs this kind of people, and you need to be able to change that from a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. Um, my second point would be in terms of um, just m in as much as our leaders are trying to solve problems, as a youth um, AI leader, I would just say that instead of just focusing primarily on the productivity value or the economic value or the profitability, it would be nice if they also focus on how sustainable the solution is um, just for the community um, at large. So we're talking about adaptability, such a key characteristic which Tofu, you know all too well at your organization adapting to the very interesting environments yeah. you are in. No, I'd love this answer about adaptability because uh, that's the thing. I mean, AI is inherently data-driven, right? So it's data that leads to the models that we then uh, use the insights from. And so in doing so, you can't necessarily know what you want your outcome to be. You have to follow the, 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 uh, the, the answers that come out. Um, so in our case, we, we actually focus on trying to stop deforestation around the world using local communities, so tribes, indigenous groups. And the approach we chose is to use sound. So we have these sensors up in trees uh, in various rainforests and forests and even deserts like this one around the world, uh, capturing all the sound and then analyzing it first for threats like chainsaws, uh, logging trucks, gunshots, and then mobilizing local groups to go stop it. Um, but it's, it's so funny how over the years uh, what came out of this is that, I mean, for example, we're listening to the forest and picking out threats, but the forest is so noisy all the time, especially the rainforest. So for example, here's a live stream from Indonesia right now. And so within this, there's at least 18 species frankly yelling out at the top of their lungs at us, and you can't ignore this over time. And so that's where this idea of community uh, actually evolved for us, to not just include local groups who would try and stop logging, but the animals and the ecosystem themselves. Um, and not even from an ideological point of view, just from the point of view that they can tell us so much about what's there, and if we're really going to, going to follow the data, um, we should look at all forms of intelligence and what they can sort of, uh, you know, glean from that. All forms of intelligence. Yes, Such a indeed. great way to lead into the next question because uh, intelligence is inspired by the human capability to do things, mm -hmm. to inspire things. And that's now being transitioned into machines and machine learning, which is we talked about the characteristics of young people to be AI leaders. Those are characteristics, meaning personality. But what are the core technical skills that an AI leader would need to think about here? I mean, when you go to school, there's math and science and English and whatever language you're learning, or what do they call it in my day? They call it PE, physical education. You would be doing a range of things. Let's kick off with technical skills, because there's a lot, lot of young people in the room. Let's, let's try to get a listing. We've got 20 minutes, four people. Let's do this, guys. Hatim, yeah. do you want to kick off? 
Absolutely. Um, let's do this in the perspective of what I've experienced over the last few days. I've been speaking to, to lots of your youth, lots of your students, lots of your learners, and I've been really impressed by some of those softer skills, that enthusiasm, that curiosity. I like that, softer skills. You know, these are actually, this is what leadership is about. It's not necessarily having always the technical skills, though you need those technical skills to be your foundation. But when you're in a leadership role, you need to have the ability to communicate. What is one soft skill you'd pick before we, we go on? Well, the biggest in healthcare is always going to be empathy. 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 Mm -hmm. Empathy. Go on. The reason it's empathy is because, and this is really relevant to, to AI and, and data-driven solutions, is we need to maintain that human connection. Because if we lose that human connection, what are we? So if we don't have that, we have lost a lot of our humanity. So empathy is essential. So what my people, what my patients want when they see me is that connection, is that ability to have a conversation, have a relationship, and make a decision that improves their health care. They don't necessarily want me to always be the expert. I can get my knowledge from elsewhere, and an AI can help me do that. And, and they want me true, to right? translate that knowledge. You're talking empathy, but empathy translates into the technical skill of, if I'm on a team as a project lead, um, directing the product, or a product manager, directing the build of a product, how will my empathy impact the build of that product? So you're absolutely right. They're somehow interchangeable. Data-driven solutions you talked about. If empathy is built into that, is another conversation. Mm. But how would you approach that from having technical skill for a young AI leader? Um, I think it's really important to have a good sense of, uh, of what your outcome is supposed to be and the accountability necessary to, to accomplish it. Because we found a lot that, that models can't actually drive accountability in people. And if people are the drivers of the ultimate solution, in our case, stopping illegal loggers or applying healthcare, whatever it happens to be, um, Having humans back in the loop, what is, what is it that actually motivates people to do it? And data and outcomes from models don't. So um, how do we actually lead? Uh, and as you set out to build these things, how can you make sure that, uh, that you're building it in a way that is not going to assume that the, uh, the insights from it are going to be well utilized? How can yeah. you build the, the requirement for accountability into the end? No assumptions, typically. Ask every no question. Yeah, or, or also uh, realize that you aren't building a solution. You're building a step a step in a, in a ladder towards You're building a learning process, which is yeah. what machine learning is. Claire, is that right as a statistician? Yes, I, I definitely agree. But I like that you're pointing out what kind of technical skills people need. Yeah. Um, in my work, um, just training data scientists, AI engineers, and running boot camps, um, I've just come to realize that in as much as technical skills are important, so many people have the knowledge, you know? They know the math, they know the science, they know all of that. But the difference comes in with practicality. Mm -hmm. It's one thing reading about something, it's a totally different thing actually doing it. It's the same thing for doctors like her team here. I'm sure if he just read a medicine book and you one day just plopped him in a hospital, it would be something different. Um, and it's the, the, the same exact thing for tech. In as much as people, yes, they need to learn the practical, the, the theory, right? How to code, how to do all these things. They actually also need to be given case studies so that they are able to practically apply this knowledge that they're taught. And also just building on top of the technical skills and to what her team said, um, I like to say that someone can always know, you can always teach someone how to code, but you can never teach them the right attitude. Uh, I right? can't agree with that more. I always look for attitude rather than skill, because skill can be learned, but attitude is something fundamentally different. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure Shweta will attest to that, running a team, leading computer visioning at Sky, I'm going to get the name of the company, right? Sky Specs. Sky Specs, that's correct. Sky Specs. So the technical capability that you are encouraging in young leaders, tell us. So I think everyone has already covered the points of the what, so I'm not going to repeat that. But I, can, I want to emphasize on the how. Like, we know what we want, but how do young leaders achieve that? So, and my answer is going to be based around the keyword of community. community. We have an amazing community of practitioners, AI practitioners, leaders, and evangelists out there who are ready to help you out. We have courses, newsletters, and blog posts that are like detailing the state of the art. So your learning curve becomes much easier by just going through them. And all of this is available in the community outside. And speaking on so uh, soft skills, I also think I think that it's really important of uh, you, of adapting the soft skill of reaching out to your community and asking for support and help. And I think that's a really important thing that young leaders should know. And the older leaders should be aware of that. When young leaders reach out to you for support, please lend a hand. Mm. 
Can I have one more? Absolutely, and I was going yeah. to go to you, so well timed. Oh, good, okay. <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I, I think it's really important to, to, be, to, be, uh, to feel that you can tear things apart, whether it's like hardware or software, mm. especially given the sort of black box element of some of the models we see. But they can be deconstructed through, uh, through software. Uh, and you know, even just tearing things apart, you learn so much about what's there. And that's actually accessible to most people, almost anyone, no matter where you live uh, around the world. You can take things apart. And in doing so, uh, you, you gain a new understanding that will allow you to to proceed in a way that no one taught you, essentially. You know what's lovely about this panel, and I want you to elaborate a little more because we have a little bit of time. Um, we talk technical skills and we're talking soft skills. Now, in the, typically in the workplace, young people would go in, they study for a qualification that they have, particularly in AI. We met two data scientists yesterday, Shweta, uh, young graduates, two women. That's correct, yeah. I was so excited yeah. about this, so very well done to the young woman, uh, Samia and Shuruk, I think it was. And they talked to us about, the question was, how do we confidently approach people for the kind of work that we want to do? Now, it's a very particular conversation you have, right? If you don't have experience, what do you ask? Uh, excuse me, give me some work. No. But this is where I think we're encouraging young people, and I want to get quick views from everyone, on how they build that capability. Because technical skill, you can be trained. I know we talked about it. But let's focus on the soft skills, because that, more than anything else, will help drive humanity further in our quest to work well with machines. Hasim. Yeah, I want to reflect on a conversation I had with a, a young gentleman yesterday, Anas. He came to me and he asked me, I'm coming to study computer science, AI. What do I need to do? And it's that curiosity to, to reach out to people and, and, and get that advice and mentorship, which is really important. And we've done a lot of work in the NHS to, to build those mentors and build those relationships so that actually you can work and learn the technical skills because you're going to do that anyway. You're going to do your degree. But if you create the right environment for people to have someone to go to, then have that mentorship, have that support, learn those softer skills, how, learn that communication skills, give them opportunities to go and develop those skills, they will turn into more well-rounded individuals and, and they will turn into significant leaders in, in their space. Significant leaders in the space. Tofa, what does it look like in your space? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I, I, I push back a little bit. I think it's really important for people to, to feel bold enough to, to, to start building stuff before they've like, got it validated, essentially. There's, in Silicon Valley, where I'm from, there's very much an inverse correlation between uh, when someone talks a lot about an idea and when they're actually starting to build it. And that's actually simple psychology. The more you talk about it, the more you feel satisfied about the fact that you've gotten some validation. We have to really lean into building things as quickly as possible and then seeing where they can be applied. Um, and so soft skills are really important, but uh, w once you build something, I believe you won't be able to resist sharing with other people. Um, so less so pitching, more demonstrating. Le less pitching, more building, and building a... Um MVP, minimum viable product, and running with it. But it's the confidence to do so, right? Yeah, it's always the confidence yeah. to do you gotta so. Have the, you gotta have the confidence or, uh, or, or feel that it's, it's a necessary step to get to the point where right. you validate it. Well, uh, to wrap up this question, and between Claire and Shweta, we'll talk about this. The confidence to do so, the soft skill that you need to succeed as an AI leader, you wanna elaborate on that? Do you wanna go first? Okay. Um, Either or. <laughs> I mean, you pointed at both, so yeah. Yes. Go ahead. So um, I would just like to say in terms of confidence, confidence comes with skills, right? So it all loops back to technical skills. If I am skilled and I know I can do A, B, and C, I'll be more confident, right? Speaking about it, interacting with people about it. So um, what, what you first said is when, when these students come up to you and they're like, how do I get started? Who do I talk to? They will only have the confidence to do that. They will only have the confidence to apply themselves if they themselves feel that they're skilled enough, right? Yeah. And the skilled enough goes back to what I was talking about, which is being able to practically apply and do what you have been taught to do. And it's about successful brand building as well as a young person, understanding the ability to brand build. To, uh, well, Tofa, I, I, want, I want you to, to make your point and we'll come back to you. Yeah, real quick. All I would say also is that students don't necessarily need to reach out to people they feel are mentors. The best products, the best things ever built are when students work together, not with mentors. Um, and so the, the best advice might be to 